Hey guys, welcome to another live sculpting in 3ds Max. Um, I'm gonna be creating something like this, three seat sofa for your architectural design. So there are gonna be a couple of tricks uh, how to easily and quickly create something like this. So let me just hide this one. And let's get started. I'm not going to explain every step because I have a lot of tutorials on my YouTube channel how you can create similar stuff. So if you want to check them out, just uh, go on my channel and check the tutorials. I just detached this uh, top surface because I'm going to need it afterwards and just hide it. It is polygons and half of dips. And having the pivot point aligned at this edge, let me just reposition it a little bit better. And having the snap uh, angle snap toggle on, and then just holding shift and rotate until it says 120. And make two copies. And bam, I have my borders for my sofa created. So I'm just going to attach these parts together, apply a shell modifier, maybe a little bit bigger value, and collapse it, convert it to editable poly. In the top view, I'm just going to move these vertices a little bit, and I'm just going to use a constraint to edge. So I can easily create at the center part. I'll just select this and, and bridge them together and this and, and bridge them together. I'll just select polygons. I'm just gonna use by angle so I can easily select uh, polygons. Forget to uh, turn off uh, constraint to edge. Just gonna pull this down, and then I'm just gonna go to top view and unhide my circle that I saved up before. And as you can see, the circle is a bit larger, and the borders are. So I'm just gonna, um, let's say, ignore back facing, and I'm just gonna select polygons. So just make sure you don't have any polygons that you don't need. And the polygons should be uh, over the edge of this circle, or it won't work. Detach it as a clone, select the circle and newly created polygons circle. And under 
compound objects, boolean, pick operand and pick this. And just change the color because this is really bright. And then again under edit poly, four on the keyboard and just delete this. Out of the isolation mode, we can now see I have this part uh, conforming to the edges of this uh, model. So then this is all about just making some uh, volume. And also, well, let's just try one step earlier. I'm just gonna ah. I'm gonna do this afterwards. Let's just apply norms so we can see how it would look if we would apply a turbo smooth modifier or some other smoothing modifier. And as you can see, we get this center stretched parts, which I don't like. So we'll have to fix this. So I'm just gonna insert it a little bit, but make sure the vertices are not overlapping. I'm just going to target weld some of these uh, vertices that are really close together so they don't overlap too soon and insert it a little bit more. And when you have uh, inset it twice and let me just apply a supportive edge here. And if we now turn on uh, norms, we don't see uh, the lines in the center anymore. As we can see, underneath. we need to have uh, two inset, inset uh, steps for this to work. Only one step won't do the trick. But this is only applicable for uh, if you don't have uh, these center parts raised, because if we raise this can see we again get these uh, lines visible. So if we really want to have uh, now we can see we have some problem here. So I'm just gonna probably go back a couple of steps to see where this happened. So I don't want to have any artifacts or it won't look that way at the end. So I normally just try to uh, connect some of these edges so we don't have uh, that large amount of uh, triangles. So I'm just gonna cut across with snap turned on. At this stage, I'm not really concerned about uh, creating pure uh, four-sided polygons. I just tried to uh, get rid of that lines when we apply a norms modifier. So let, let me just see if this now would work. 
yeah, there are there are still uh, some of them, but we got rid of uh, a lot of them. So this is the way how you can get rid of um, some of the distortions. Step you can do is to just remove a self detection and turn on norms so we can see how it would look. And just well, we have a little bit too large. And let me try now, right? A little bit. create a slope this seat part and yeah, there are still some artifacts but how to get rid of them because we started with this So you see, I have now one step, and if I apply on norms, I still have them. But if I apply another inset, they shouldn't be here anymore. See? So now back to the top view. I still have my uh, original position of pivot point. So I'm just going to use that to create uh, duplicates. Again, rotate them 120 degrees. Bam. And let me just uh, do something else here. I just added an additional line. It inwards and pull this width really close together. And now, if I apply an arms, you can see I get additional edge that looks like something is has been stitched. Uh, and this is the cushion, and this is the hard part of the sofa. So now I'm just going to play around with this uh, part. Let's see. I'm going to target weld parts together because I don't really like them. I should probably do this before I <laughs> bully on the sofa parts because now they are kind of inside the sitting part. So you probably need to uh, think ahead what you're going to change before you change it. Or you can get in trouble. I'm just adding additional supporting lines here. So the model doesn't get too deformed after I apply uh, NERM 25. So let's apply two sides M, and if I NERM NERMs on, you see it gets a little bit better. can also, let me just see, select these parts. Uh, 
I'm just gonna do the legs for these parts. Just gonna you know, use box. Hold control. Create a perfect square. Down. Convert it to editable poly. Pull these parts up until they snap to the bottom of the sitting part. And in the top view, I'm just going to make them a little bit larger. So we get something like this. I don't really like where the position of this is. So push it down a little bit. Push this down a little bit. Just a repetition. And make this. You can make also instances because if you go back and change something in one model, it will apply to all of these parts. I'm just going to group this and reposition the pivot point. And if this uh, pivot point, uh, when you change to uh, rotate or any other tool isn't here, just move the uh, perspective view and then just uh, turn on and turn off effect pivot only. And it will eventually snap to the new pivot point that you set. Holding shift, just rotate it 120 degrees two times. And you're pretty much done. You just need to, for example, change the colors. These parts, I mean these parts. Just to get the basic view of what you have. And that's pretty much it. So check out the rest of my videos on my YouTube channel. Like this video, share it, comment it, and till next time. Bye.